afternoon, everybody. You men of standards, hopefully you're in there. Dr. V, it's good to see you. I was asking about you and praying for you the other day. So good to see you. Very good to see you. Rick and all you men out there, God bless you today. I'm going to talk live on air to the men of standards. Anybody's welcome to continue to listen. Patty, if you desire to, whoever's recording, you can record this. That's fine. You really can. I thought I would do this as an introduction, and it's good that it be recorded so that everybody knows and can comprehend why we have a men of standards anyway, why we would group them in together to have this. I'm going to talk to the men. Ladies, you're welcome to hear this. Please don't take anything out of context for yourselves. This is not about overpowering the, the, uh, your, your companions or anything else. But this is strictly about standards. But before we ever speak of standards that men are to have, we need to discuss why men are about in the first place. Right? What is the charge of a man? What is the charge of a female? Let's go back to the garden. Now, men, you have to hang with me on this. You're going to have to be men. Men need to be men, certainly in this day and age. And so guess what? Let's bring some truth forward. In fact, who sinned? Adam or Eve? I find it curious how so many facts before our faces. But the Lord did this. He always spoke and he said, through one man's sin, death entered into the world. And through Christ, life was given again. Well, that one man's sin was Adam. But Eve was uh, beguiled first. Hmm. So in fact, what I'm telling you is this. Although Eve was beguiled, being female, a female has the ability to give birth based upon the seed she carries. Adam was the final decision. He was. What would have happened if Adam would not have partaken of the fruit? I'll tell you what, he still would have covered his wife. They collectively would have been sinless. But because Adam slipped, sin entered into the world. Some people don't believe that. So we're going to put things back into a biblical context, a true context. There's so many men out there who will look and blame women for things, and I'm telling you, that's a fallacy. No, that's a fallacy. Let me give you an example. In Genesis 13:13, 13, 13, it says that the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord. Well, what about the women? Why doesn't the Lord went mention women in these things? Why? Because the truth is this, and I know things of the common age have been distorted to a great degree. But the fact is this, a man carries a seed. Men do. It is the male species that the Lord has truly empowered with strength. It is the female that should be cared for because that female has a womb. Not only physically does she have a womb, but spiritually she has a womb. Not only physically does a male carry strength, but spiritually a male carries strength. So let's explain it. Adam. Adam's backbone was truly Eve. I'll tell you why. Because all males will look at a female. And if you identify closely enough, you'll find out that all of what you do is for the sake of that female, not for the sake of yourselves. The strength of a male is not within himself, but the strength of a male is in what he can do for the one he loves. That's where strength comes from. That includes children. That includes other people. That includes his companion. Right? The strength of that male comes to the forefront based upon his counterpart, those people he loves. 
That's why a, a male is empty all by himself, doing things for himself. He'll wander through the world. He'll have no completion, no true serenity, no peace, no anything. And they will search for a lifetime, attempting to find those things they know nothing of. But a male, once they have a companion, they want to give the world to the companion, which becomes the motivation of their lives. Now that's fine and dandy, but it's very dangerous, outside of the prescribed way of life that the Lord gave us. Keep in mind, you've made the image and likeness of God. You also carry some attributes of the Father within yourselves. You can't wondrously, aimlessly walk this earth. You have to have purpose to what you're doing. A man is strengthened and is given purpose by his companion. And something has happened. And we're going to discuss this today to put things back in perspective. You see, in this day and age, a lot of men are being raised by their mothers. The fathers have been absent. Women do not blame the males. Because I'm going to share with you what has actually happened. Don't blame the males. That was a spiritual assault that began a long time ago. Something methodical in its process. The absence of a male to influence another male weakens the species as a whole. Now you have men who are trying to have a mother figure in their lives and it's causing them to wonder. A lot of males have a closeness with their mothers. A very special place in the heart for females. Right? But it becomes distorted because they didn't have a male overseer. They didn't have the harshness and the discipline a male requires. They didn't. I said it has caused them to be empty in quite a few ways. Though they have the strength, they do not exercise it in a godly fashion. And that's why the generations of the world and society itself has been broken down. Sodom was pronounced guilty because of the males in Sodom, not the women. In fact, in all sorts of places, a kingdom was pronounced to be destroyed because of the men of that kingdom. Those of you who read the Old Testament, you can see these things. So what I'm telling you men is the strength and the guilt is upon your shoulders. You are the standard bearers. And if you don't carry a standard, through you, all things around you can be condemned. I know some beautiful females, beautiful in the spirit, who've had rotten husbands. And because the husband allowed things to come into the home, that female, whether she knew of the Lord or not, suffered. Because it is the man who becomes the doorway for that home. Also, the children suffer. The Lord, over the course of time, did deliver those folks. Yes, he will. He will always do that. But it was the male who was the door. The male was. Whatever a male permits to come into his house will operate in the house. Let me give you an example of something. If you have passion, say you have a spouse, right? And you're upset with your spouse, but your smile another female, what you're doing is allowing dissension to enter into the home. You're allowing spirits to come into the home and wreak havoc. Why? Because just as the Lord should be first in our lives, so should your spouse be first in yours. But whatever you miss, you allow to operate in your household. If the woman in a household is angry and mad and this, that, and the other, you're men, so what? You ought to stand as men. If you become angry with your spouse, that's through your own frustration. Because now you're trying to control your spouse, not honor her. If you honor your spouse, she can get as mad as she wants. You're still going to love her. 
you may think is cute. But if you're intimidated by their anger, that means your eye has wandered somewhere else. And you choose not to hear that cry. Because when a woman gets angry, it's actually a cry. There's a trait of a woman they can they can't restrain. It is this: they will tell you everything. How they say it, well, that depends upon them. But sometimes they can be angry and tell you everything. Sometimes they can be happy and tell you everything. But everything will come out of a woman's mouth, good or bad. And what they're doing is communicating in their capacity, and that's why they do so. Who designed the woman in the first place? Our father orchestrated that. He knows all about them, which is why sin is ascribed to the male. Hmm. Sin is. So males, you have to hold a standard no matter what that female is doing. Now, the challenge of any male with a female is to first cut everybody outside of your lives. I'm serious, too. Let no one interfere with your flesh. Here's what happens. When you have a companion, men, I can tell you this. You upset her purposely, you're going to be upset. You, and, it's, and, and some guys may say, well, that's just totally unfair. No, oh, you're made men. You're made a man. The doorway to a relationship. You are. You break a female's heart, your heart's going to be broken. In other words, you will pay for those things you do to that female, but all too often people, people just get angrier and angrier and angrier because they don't understand the vicious cycle they're in, men. That means you don't realize your counterpart is actually you. Why would you break your own heart? And that's why you feel the pain that you impose upon your companion. When you think to distance yourself from your companion, what you do is open many doorways into your home for many things to operate and function. Only the bond of love and closeness and a commitment shuts the door to all things. Not even a telephone conversation can influence your spouse when love is so deeply attached. Right? But it starts with the male. You're made to take the suffering, men, as part of being a male. You were made to go the distance, men. You're the security of your companion, no matter what she says. A woman will say, I don't need you, but inside she's saying, I need you so much, but I'm frustrated. She's speaking her thoughts. That's what females do often. They speak their thoughts. They do. They will speak their thoughts. And that's misinterpreted by males in many cases. Men of standards, when it comes to their spouse, they seek out the Lord to resolve issues in the home. They do all things by the Lord. All things. They can never be beguiled by their spouse. In other words, if your spouse gets angry and she's trying to move you into something away from the Lord and you do so because you're seduced, you have just opened a door to spirits in your home again. But if you stand firm and you look her in the eye and say, no, God forbid I ever do that. She may be angry, but guess what? You didn't open that door. She'll eventually see it. And the house is still covered. You really do love someone. You will stand with Christ because you know that if you don't stand with Christ, they can be destroyed. Your children can be destroyed. When you truly love your family, you're going to stay your course with the Father, not opening any doors. You're not going to become emotionally involved in conversations. You're going to oversee all things. You're going to stand at that door and say, Lucifer, you will not be victorious today. You'll plead the blood over every entrance of your home. And what I mean by that, an entrance to your home is not the doorway or the window. 
The entrance to your home is your education of the children. The smallest minute problem they may have. The frustration of your wife. The arguments that take place in the home. Those are cracks in doorways. If you don't cover them, men, you're sitting there and watch something else come in. If you maintain the standards of the living God in your household, the standards of the living God will be in that household. Men, you set the atmosphere. No matter how bad somebody out there may say, well, my spouse is just evil. Okay, so what? But guess what? You're responsible for purging that evil out of your house. You can't get frustrated or frustration enters into your house. If you get angry, anger enters into your house. Whatever you exercise will enter into the home. Men are not built to have a pity party. When a man wants a pity party, that means he is starved of love. If a man can recognize that, they'll say, wait a minute. I don't need that kind of love from anybody on this earth, but I need to find my Lord. You see, with a man, unfortunately, his fulfillment is not the companion. His fulfillment is receiving all the love of Christ. A man will never have peace, nor will his walk be straight, until he understands the cross. When a man understands that sacrifice, he too will become a person of sacrifice. Men are designed to sacrifice. Men are designed to live, to protect and carry out things to their last breath. No man is designed to give up, and that's why when a male gives up, they feel guilty for giving up. Come on, men, you know that. You've gotten so frustrated with things that you said, well, I just give up, and you felt guilty for giving up. That's a man thing, women out there. It's a man thing. Men feel guilty for giving up. Men seek to exercise the authority that's in them. They just don't know how. Often that can come into trying to control your household and turn into evil. That control you are supposed to exercise over your flesh that control you exercise, every place that you are becomes yours, men. And that control is you saying, no, I will not be moved. No evil's coming into this domain. Men of standards understand that they're not here to live a life for themselves. They really need to understand that their true strength is for servitude of their household and that one they love. Can you imagine what in the world happened in the garden? So Eve takes up that fruit. Adam knows it's wrong. Eve was beguiled. So how did she beguile Adam when Adam knew it was wrong? Often I've pondered this. And there are many things you can think of, but if you look at the way women get to men these days, you can see it. Out of the love of a male, to please a woman, men start doing anything to please the woman. Why? Because in truth, a woman is made the way she is to catch the eyeball of a male. And if a male is not rooted and grounded in truth, his imagination runs away. So Eve was over there, and Adam said, so, ooh. She's going to be happy if I just join in with this thing. It's a small thing. I know God said no. He's lost his mind. Forgotten about what God said. You know he forgot about what God said because he got lost in her. That's why he hit himself, right? He was scared. He heard God walking. And what did he, what did he go do? He wouldn't hit. Why? Because he came back to reality. He said, oh, my Lord, what have I done? What have I done? He didn't ask Eve. He asked Adam, what in the world have you done? Didn't you notice that? He didn't look at Eve and say, Eve, what have you done? That's not what he did. He said, Adam, what did you do? Why? Because Adam had dominion. Just like God gave you dominion. God gives you dominion. 
Do you know that's why a female will always seek out a male? Now, through her emotions and anger, she may not seek you out, but she's seeking somebody out. A woman is always going to be drawn to the authority of a male. When they're not with the Lord or thinking straight, they're going to seek out that authority that favors them. But they still do it. Because they're not seeking out your authority. They're seeking out a truth. And the truth is this. The Lord gave you authority, men. You do have the authority. That's why you shouldn't waste your time trying to prove that you have it. But in silence and meekness and the inhumility, exercise that authority in righteousness, in truth. Let nothing wicked enter in to you. So all men of standards have a job to do. See, if your household doesn't purge itself, you can't stand before the Lord and say, well, Lord, I tried, but they wouldn't change. He's going to say, nope, 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 nope. What about you? What about you? He's going to ask you. Men, you have a job to do. To operate by the word of God. Your companion. Don't let spirits use your companion to beguile you. Because you'll damage her. Don't get mad at her because she's trying to beguile you. Keep the standards to the father. Point them out gently to her. Don't provoke her. And she's going to get mad when things don't go her way. That will happen from time to time based upon a maturity rating. So what? Expect her to get angry when something doesn't go her way because they'll always come down and come back and talk to you if you're approachable. But if you blow up, you just lost the fight. When she gets angry, you get angry. She fights you, you fight back. No, you're a male. What are you doing? That is a spirit doing the same thing that happened in the garden. Why didn't Lucifer go to Adam? I'll tell you why. He couldn't. He couldn't get to Adam. So he went to Adam's weak point, which was Eve. He knew that if he could uh, 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 beguile Eve, he could get to Adam. He could not come to the face of Adam and get Adam himself. He couldn't do it. So he went through Eve because Adam has a weakness for Eve, just like you have a weakness for a female. You have a, you'll do dumb things for female men. Don't try to act like you won't either, because you will. You will. You'll do very dumb things. I see it every day. Certainly see it with young troops. Oh, boy. And, and not only young, but some old troops. They do the weirdest things for the sake of females. They'll throw their whole career down the tube. Because they think it pleases a female. They'll act like Superman if necessary to capture the eye of a female. Why? Because a female is a male's weakness. Why is a female a male's weakness? Because a female is actually part of the male. Just like if you chopped your finger off, you would do anything to try and get that finger back on. Just like if anybody cuts their hand, you'll do anything to stop the pain. Right? Right? Now, let's disassociate pain from any cut, and you'll ignore it, wouldn't you? You wouldn't even know you cut yourself. You wouldn't take care of it. It would get infected, and it would do more damage than you could possibly believe. A small cut could allow infection to enter into the whole body. Because pain is associated, it draws your attention. Let me tell you something. A woman is the same way to men. You're very attentive to every mood she has. But you have to see past her flesh. No matter how attractive her flesh is, no matter how not attractive her flesh is, you have to look past her flesh. Once you become one, you have to love your companion for who she is on the inside. You have to look beyond the flesh. Understand that her flesh is your flesh and your flesh is her flesh. So then it's no longer based off flesh. 
because God sees you as one flesh. That means if your spouse has a problem, God sees you as having a problem. You're the male of that situation. And I'll tell you, the doorway is in your hands, men. In the body of Christ, in like manner, the standards are up to us. They're up to us. You see, if the men begin to fall apart, the house will fall apart. Because God designed it that way. Do you understand that? He designed us that way. So long as our bodies are different, we're designed for different purposes. Yes, we serve the same father. But didn't he make a cat a cat and a dog a dog, an elephant an elephant, and a bird a bird? All of them have different functions, don't they? You wouldn't put a, a saddle on a, on a sparrow, would you? Hmm? Would you put a saddle on a sparrow? Would you raise beetles and hope that they lay eggs so you can have scrambled eggs? No, you get chickens for that. And what I'm telling you is that each species is made for a purpose, and men, so are you. You are made like you are made for a purpose. That's why you feel so guilty and empty when you do not fulfill that purpose. And I'm going to give you a little secret. Men... If you're not fighting for someone and you're only fighting for yourself, you'll never find peace. You'll only isolate yourself and never be complete. Your joy rests in your ability to truly fight for someone. Your strength is dormant until you begin to fight for someone. Depression will come for you if you do not function in your capacity. Guess what's happened over the course of time? These are things that a father would teach a son, right? What has happened over the course of time is that the fathers have been taken out of the way and there are a lot of single mothers raising males. When a male is raised by a mother, good job to the mother, but the male is incomplete. The reason they're incomplete is because they always begin to think like a female. They won't be a guardian. Over everyone, they become partial to females only. Then they begin to hunt out and search for someone just like their mother. Thus, they will never search out for themselves. Always something that mimics something else. Also, a lot of males... They don't have enough discipline to keep their mouths shut, and they always want to exercise control. Women are sweet and passionate. Women understand emotion. Right? Women operate by that. They're built to do that because they're built to nurture the young, to attempt to help and raise them. Women have to see differently than males. They have to. Let me give you an example of something. If your right eye saw exactly what the left eye saw, do you not know you would have no depth perception? Your right eye does not see at the same angle that the left eye does, nor does a woman see what a male sees. But both together, they have depth perception. Separately, they have no depth perception. The body of Christ is the same way. You don't want everybody seeing everything the same way. There's no depth perception. Males are not put here to mimic a female. Males are to be males. And Satan began to attack the seed of the male by once again getting to a female, causing them to be mean, promiscuous. Then he calls males to be the same way, controlling. So they split up. And guess who raised the children? The educational system raised the children. Now men are raised by the standards to the educational system, society, media, television, music. That's why most young males mimic 
what they have already seen on television, heard in a song. They mimic what's being presented to them by the news. And why are they doing that? Because they didn't have a direct male figure in their lives. And they still have to be males. But they're drawing upon their discipline from things that are made up. Things that are interpreted and presented to them. Thus, this, the male seed is now controlled by the propaganda of men. When a father's absent, the world becomes the father of that child. The world does. The examples that young man carries is from the world. Hmm. See, Satan targeted the seed to corrupt it yet again. He didn't do it by DNA. He did it by removing the fathers. And thus the child didn't have an example of the direct father that's from his own lineage but he had an example from a different father and he begins to aspire to that different father called the world thus they become efficient in the world and when you become efficient in the world you, you often do not come to Christ you become callous something else becomes the God of you. You will become the very one you're in training under. That's what's happened to the male seeds, which makes a Christian male one of the most important, important things on the face of this earth. It also makes a Christian woman precious, just like a diamond. Just like a diamond. Males, you have to remember that. You're built to live in the standards of Christ. You're built to war in the spiritual realm. You are. See, men have this, in, uh, this ability. When you start talking about spiritual things... They will begin to say, well, I'll just fight it. But it's the females who become scared. Why? Because they're not built for everything you think they are. But the male is. For the sake of that female, the male will stand up to anything. And if something threatens the life of that female, that male is going to give his life. He'll give his life. You're meant to fight spiritual warfare. You're meant to stand tall. You're meant to be a pillar. When you do that, a female is also purposed to support you as you stand for Christ. A female watches everything around you. Don't reject her advice. Listen to her. They can see things you can't. Are you there protecting? She's telling you what's sneaking over the mountain. A female has purpose to recognize a serpent. While you're busy fighting spiritual warfare, she can, she can absolutely name every type of viper that's coming in your direction. She's not useless. Females have been given sight. They've also been given a special reception of language that comes directly from the spiritual realm. How did Lucifer talk to Eve, but Adam couldn't see it? How did that happen? Hmm? Hmm. How would that happen? But he did. That serpent talked to Eve, and Eve understood. Did the serpent talk to Adam? Did he? Can anybody tell me if the serpent talked to Adam? Anybody? What did the serpent say to Adam? Anybody tell me? Hmm? Can anybody tell me what the serpent said to Adam? I know he said, he said to the woman. He beguiled her. He was talking to her. Right? He gave the woman sight beyond sight, didn't he? 
He gave the woman to see a different way, but the serpent itself, well, well why didn't the serpent talk to Adam? Why? It was the Lord who spoke to Adam, but the serpent spoke to Eve. My goodness. So what does that mean? A woman has the ability to hear things from the spiritual realm. But a man hears the Lord. That means sometimes a woman is unsure of where things are coming from. And if you ever lose your standards in the Lord, You'll follow a voice that is not of the Father through a female. See, you're not, you're not protecting her at that point. You're not protecting her. You're not fighting for her. Women have this ability, but it, takes, it often takes a male. It often takes a male to say, oh, no. 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 Let's stand here. And when you do that together... Nothing is withheld from the two. Do you know that? Together. Huh. Most people don't think of it that way. A lot of women are scared of snakes, but a lot of men are not. Why? Because a woman has been given a gift to see the viper for what it is. But a male is a conqueror. A guardian, a pillar. And for the sake of the woman, he can renounce his fear and go attack or fight anything. He can. But the serpent never spoke to Adam. My goodness, how did that slip for all these years? Think about that. When's the last time you heard a message that ever stated that the serpent did not speak to Adam? When's the last time you heard that? Did you ever hear that at all? I ask you this. Why are these things in the word of God? But nobody's talking about them. I'll tell you why. Because if you are focused on controlling someone, you're going to miss the truth. The truth is very simple. The truth has already been established. But because we look with purpose, we only see those things that support our purpose. You may read Genesis to answer a question for somebody else, to support what you've already defined. But when you read the word of God that you may know who the Lord is, you see it all. All things can be revealed when you read the word of God to know the Lord your God. If you read for a reason, you will only, only take in those things that support, support your, whatever you are reading it for. You become a researcher in the word of God. And you can only see those things that will support your research. Right? Satan is not going to approach a male in that way. The last male he approached face to face was Jesus of Nazareth he also faced somebody else he attacks males yes to test them only but he speaks to women and tries to beguile them women if you're listening understand this all of what you hear that enters into you has to be subjected to truth or you don't take it in do not function by every voice that you hear. And this is why women operate. And their language is in part emotional. The language of a woman is in part an emotional language. The spiritual realm is also in part an emotional realm. They can perceive things. But a male is so stubborn and hard-headed that if a male be with the standards of the living God only that female can change his mind see when a, if another male tries to do it it becomes competition and the male's not going to move but a female can make him change his mind 
And so females have to subject their thoughts to all truth and truth only. It's dangerous for a female to function by imagination. It's, function, it's dangerous for a female to assume. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. But it's liberating for a female to go to her companion and ask, is this approved by the Lord? But if a female have pride, she's not going to do that. She's going to say, I already know. See, women do already know. I hate to tell you that, males. They already know. They don't know how they know. They just know. That's why you can't get away with anything either. I'm going to tell you something else. If you think you're sneaking and doing something, your spouse already has knowledge of it. She just can't articulate it. That's why the male sits up there and they get angrier when the female figure them out to the T because they're always looking and studying. Listen, anything in the nest or the house of a woman, she knows where every nook and cranny is and she can always tell you what she wants out, what she wants to replace, what shouldn't be there and what should be there. That's women. They do this because they want everything right, not for themselves, but for the comfort of those who enter into her house. It is a nest. wants it orderly to a large degree that's why if it, if if a house gets messy right a woman gets overwhelmed if a woman ever gets depressed her house will get messy men are always messy unless they're standing their post now i've learned one thing one thing i haven't well i've learned uh, two things or a couple things but one thing i want to point out when a male is standing his post He's much neater. When a male is not standing his post, he's sloppy. See, when a male is standing his post, he's an actual watchman. He's looking over everything. And when a male looks over everything, they will look into every nook and cranny. They notice everything in their houses. They begin to straighten things up all by themselves. Why? Because they're a true watchman. When a man is not a true watchman, he has his own agenda other than watching, and he overlooks everything. Let me ask you a question. How can anybody be a watchman, yet they overlook things in their own house? How can that work? I know some of the men around there saying, oh, he got me. Oh, he's got me on that one. He's got me because I'm messy Marvin. A true watchman certainly knows the condition of his own house. A true watchman watches everything. A true watchman will watch his inventory. A true watchman knows the condition of his sheep. A true watchman is surely watching on all watches, not just the first watch, the second watch, but also the third watch. And if a watchman is surely watching, he knows what's out of place in his home. And if he's not lazy, a lazy watchman can't do anything. He'll be too lazy to sound the alarm. And you know what the alarm is for a watchman? It is the petition and prayer. It is the stance of a man in all faith. The alarm of the watchman is his readiness. To stand there like iron, saying nothing is going to enter into these gates, only my Lord shall do so. A true watchman will see his children come into the house and will notice the spirit upon them and say, No, you get out. A true watchman can change the atmosphere of his home. A true watchman. In every place I've lived in, gentlemen, I was responsible for the atmosphere. I'm telling you now, based upon me, that atmosphere would change. When I found that out, for the last 30-some years, every single place I've been in, people say the same thing. You know what they say? 
they say it is peace in here. Do you know why? Because I stand guard. I do not let anger into the home. Thus, I don't get angry. I don't let wrath enter into the home. I don't partake of wrath. Nor do I discuss conversations about somebody else so deceit does not enter into the home. Children love the atmosphere. They say it is peaceful. People will come to where I dwell and start to fall asleep and say, well, I just never felt so restful. And you know what that is? That is simply this. It's because I'm standing guard always. That's why. Listen, in my world, there's nothing worth me getting angry over in the first place. Because I know the nature of all things is spiritual. It has nothing to do with the flesh. Well, you know that everything has an origin in the spirit. And you, you truly don't war against the flesh. You handle things differently. I also understand that what's in me will set the atmosphere for the house. I also know that in your home is a sanctuary for all who enter. I also know that my home is not actually my home, but an appointed place for the Lord. Just as I am a vessel, so is the house a vessel. My dwelling place is a vessel. If somebody comes into the house cursing and everything else, they won't stay long themselves because they will be compelled to either leave or cry. That's a fact. Violence can never stay in my house because I set a petition over the door. I'm telling you the truth. I committed the house. I committed the place. I committed my office and dwelling places unto the Lord. When you do that, and you're mindful of that every time you enter in and say, Thank you, Lord, for providing this place. For your kingdom and your will. And when you operate in that capacity, evil cannot enter. It won't. It, it will stay far away from you. But repair will be in that place. And every place I ever, I've ever been in, I will say the same play, prayer. Lord, let this place be for the establishment of truthful peace and repair to all souls who enter. Lord, let everything in this house be a glory unto you. But most of all, I ask for repair for all things in the house for the soul who may enter. That repair is peace. Because when you're repaired, you finally have peace. And you're liberated. And I do that everywhere I go. I do it to the cars, vehicles, aircrafts, whatever. That same thing. Let it be for the repairing of souls. I don't seek to impress anybody. I seek the will of the Father in their lives. And I see that happen every day. There's no room for wrath or anger in those things. That's when a person gets frustrated. They say, oh, it's not working out according to my plan. Well, I'll tell you something, men. When you yourselves have no plan, but you're standing on your watch, you won't get angry. And you're always ready to go the distance. And you truly are a watchman. A watchman does not watch the occupants of his house. But a watchman doesn't let things enter in. A watchman knows the condition of all things. But a watchman also is called a watchman because he watches to keep the standards of the king. The watchman is assigned to his post by the king. The watchman will sound the alarm to anything that opposes the king. Who is our king of glory? Jesus of Nazareth is our king of glory, our high priest, the king of kings and lord of lords. And every knee is going to bow to him and every tongue will confess. And see, that's who we are watchmen for, our king. Our king. And anything that is not of our king, we do stand against. That's a watchman. You can't be a watchman part-time. First, second, and third watch are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in all seasons. All the time. In your conversations with your family, you're still a watchman. And if you truly are a watchman, 
You have no time for fun. You're about your father's business. Because you know if you have fun, your guard is let down, you're not paying attention, and death can enter into your home. Situations begin to die in your home. Death will surely enter when you're not paying attention. But if you're a watchman, oh no, your joy is in standing your post for the sake of the king. You hold up the standard of Christ in your life. You hold up the house you're in, the place you're in. If you keep his standards, you stay in the will of God. You stay in the will of God. Remember something. Remember this. You know in the book of Daniel when it says sound the alarm in my holy mountain, that's a spiritual alarm. That's why he further said, call a solemn assembly. That's a spiritual command. When something is not about the king, it is resisted by the watchman. And that's when a watchman goes to work. They'll say, oh no, something opposite the king is coming. Now you and your homes, guess what? That's when you start praying and you stand against all things that are not of the Lord. And I say that often, I'll say, oh no, internally a person may enter into my presence. And I'll say, oh no, I'll start praying without saying a word. And that very thing that was in a person, I didn't utter a word, will flee from that person. And they always say, I don't, they always say, I don't know what came over me, but now I just feel like weights have lifted off my shoulder all of a sudden. Must be this place or it must be you. No, it wasn't me or this place. It's being a watchman. When you stand your post as a watchman, you do so with authority. You're allowed to sound the alarm. One thing people do miss. When you sound the alarm, everybody knows. The king hears the alarm. That's why you're given the alarm. My goodness. Do you not know the king authorized you to sound the alarm? And sounding that alarm is resisting all things that are not the king. Even the alarm itself is a weapon against evil and darkness. And when you sound the alarm, you spiritually are charged and you go straight to war. See, a watchman will watch, but when the alarm is sounded, the watchman turns into a warrior. Don't you know this? A watchman won't sit there and watch and everybody else go to war. No. A watchman will go into battle. A watchman has great endurance. And the alarm of a watchman is him going into battle. See, if a watchman goes into battle, everybody's going into battle. Why? Because a watchman saw it. If a watchman leaves his tower, that alarm is his adornments. Like some of you men going into your prayer closet. Like some of you men just getting totally quiet. And you begin to petition and pray and command without uttering a word. There's so many times the same situation has arisen. I didn't say a word, but in my heart I was petitioning. And demons fled. You know why? Because demons are of the spiritual realm. Because they are not of the realm of this reality. They respond to what's in the heart. They hear things of the heart. They hear words of the spirit. I need not speak it. If it's in my heart, and I'm telling you, I pray without ceasing because my heart is always in petition to the Father. And I'm always thankful for everything he's ever done. And I seek his wisdom and understanding, men. When you see your companion crying or child crying, don't you say, Lord, help me understand why this child is crying. Give me the understanding and wisdom that I require to intercede in this situation. I say things like that all the time. And they become effective. But if I do it on my own, it's almost like a 50-50 gamble. Yeah, I found that out too. If I don't seek the Lord before I do something, it's a 50-50 it's a gamble. I can't do that. 
Because when your heart is truly with a person, you're truly sincere about them, you don't want to mess up. And so you ask the one of perfection. You ask your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he grants to you those things through the Holy Spirit. Right on the spot. When that happens, you become useful to the kingdom. So, gentlemen, you are a little more than what you thought, aren't you? Don't take up arms against your spouse, your household. Stand in the way of the Lord always, no matter what. Because if you don't, you're going to feel the repercussions of what you put on your spouse, men. Notice I'm not talking about the women putting anything on the male. Because it is the male the Lord has empowered to overcome all things that a female could ever do, just so you know. Just so you know, didn't you learn this about King Solomon? The very one that had all those concubines said, well, who can find a virtuous woman? You know, when I first read that, I laughed so hard I couldn't believe it. I said, wait a minute, this is the wisest person that ever was or ever will be. And he went and had a thousand concubines. And then he says, who can find a virtuous woman? That's the funniest thing I ever heard in my life. So you go get 1,200 women and concubines. And then you say, who can find a virtuous woman? Are you kidding? That's the funniest thing I ever heard. That would be like you going through a swamp and you get bit 28 times by serpents and you go back into the swamp 200 times and you come out on the other side saying, who can go into a swamp and not get bitten? That's funny. That's raw humor. First lesson I learned from reading those writings of Solomon was to stand firm in that a man is much more effective with less. Man is much more effective with less. With that guy, the wisest there ever was. It also shows you that when it comes to the spiritual things that the Lord departed, you can be as wise as ever. But if you don't exercise those things, you're still going to fail. King Solomon had knowledge above all men, wisdom above all men. But it still failed him, didn't it? Why did it fail him? Come to find out, gentlemen, it's to accept who the Lord has made you to be, not to revel in your own strength, not to stand up in your own power, but to commit yourselves unto the Lord. King Solomon had all the knowledge and all the wisdom, and he failed. Do you understand that? Just like today, it is not my knowledge or wisdom that one is saved, and one is going to enter into the kingdom of God. That's failing people too. They think by knowledge and by wisdom. They have entered in to the realm of God wrong. They have not. The Pharisees were just like that. So we have Solomon, and then we have the Pharisees. Right? We have the Pharisees who had knowledge of all things, but what did Jesus call them? A brood of vipers. Why? Because they weren't functional by the Spirit. They were functional by knowledge, not by the Spirit. So then we know the Spirit is absolutely, totally different from knowledge and wisdom, don't we? Men, our meetings in the Men of Standard, anybody can join these meetings. This is the only one I'm having live to set a, this is an introduction on some of the things we will be discussing. As men, we need to support one another, get to know each other. And if a spy enter into the Men of Standards meetings and things of that nature, we're not going to point the person out. We shall collectively petition for the person. See, if it's a, a spy is also somebody who's deceived. They're not your enemy. They're deceived. Often spies can be transformed 
by our ability to stand firm to the word. In the book of Daniel, there was a spy that was spying on Daniel. He spied on Daniel so long and saw Daniel's integrity that he converted to worship the God of Daniel, which is our Father in heaven. So, see, many spies were converted that way. Spies are sent among you too, and they do watch. By you staying the course, many of them will be converted. But you've got to stay the course. Men, you've got to stay the course. You've got to tame your tongue. Don't you ever let anybody give you an excuse to say, well, no one can tame the tongue. No, we have Jesus Christ, and all things are possible to them that believe. I don't believe in impossibilities. Because we have Christ Jesus, and they did not. See, that was written before Jesus came. We have Christ, all things are possible. Oh, yes, I went there too. Stop accepting the limitations that everybody had prior to Jesus Christ. We have Jesus Christ. There are no limitations on us. That's why I don't subscribe to the sayings of wise people. Well, no one can tame the tongue. Well, no one can be perfect. Yes, you. It, that all those are lies. What they're saying is, well, I don't want to tame the tongue. I want curse words to slip out of my mouth so I can be unholy in my, all manner of communication. I don't want to be perfect. I want to do a little sin here and there. That's what they're really saying. Because with Christ, all things are possible. Can you be perfect? You better believe it. Do you want to be perfect? Well, that's up to you. Many people don't want to be perfect because what you want, you will pursue. If we're joint heirs with Christ, then our objective is to be like Christ. Thus, you are a Christian. Christian means Christ-like. Was Jesus perfect in the earth? Yes, he was. I want his perfection in my life. I don't want to slip up by the tongue. I don't want to speak out of self and all these things, men. I do want to walk as Jesus walked. And yes, I adopt everything that I see that he did. I don't give excuses for this flesh. You all know I hate this flesh. It's full of deceit. Your own flesh will backstab you more than any other person would. Does not your imagination fail you on many occasions? Yes, it does. See, we have to be men. We can't be crybabies. We have to be men. We have to stand until our last breath to withhold and to keep up those standards of the Lord. Those of you who say you are Christian, you believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus of Nazareth, then stand in his standards and accept nothing less. And I'm telling you, men, yes, be hard on yourselves, because to be hard on yourselves is to reject your flesh. Don't you look for a break. You're not made for breaks. You're made to stand. You're made to be an example in this world. Remember, Genesis 13, 13, God recognized, it was recognized that the men of Sodom were full of sin. It is you. You, the seed bearer, who carries a large responsibility. A true man will treat all women with the highest of respect. They understand they are the inferior ones to males, but only by way of flesh. But we also realize they are our other half, that they can hear from the spiritual realm. They hear many things. They even hear the enemy talking. We are fixated and can hear the Lord. We hear whomever we truly serve, gentlemen. A woman hears many things. She is a help me. She does operate emotionally in a lot of ways. You don't. You have great compassion in your heart, but if it's misdirected, you're going to turn into a crazy man. 
Remember, the woman is your weakness, but the Lord is your strength. There always, there, there will always be a time where either you follow the Lord or you follow the captivating request of your companion. And I'm telling you now, you follow the Lord and gently tell her you cannot do it. Yes, she's going to throw a tantrum. But you're still covering the entire home. Learn to look beyond your own frailties. Don't be intimidated by your spouse. Not a bad thing to tell her she's right when you know she's right. You know she's right. And sometimes males get upset because a female is right. And they'll say, well, how did you know? You don't know that. They get defensive. I've seen that all too many. That's funny to me, too. I've done that a few times myself. Hey, how do you know that? You can't sneak one past the female. Haven't you, haven't you men found that out? It's always a female that can see right through your little tactics and games. She knows things you had forgotten yourself. Isn't that funny? Why? Because she is a helpmeet. Men tend to stay on course when they're reminded to be men. See, if a man doesn't need to be a watchman, he'll become drunk. He will. But when a man is on a mission, oh, he's on the mission. And he will say within himself, nothing is going to get past me. Because if I fall, they fall. When men realize that, they do well. If a man falls in a household, the household truly fell. If a woman falls in a household, the male can help the woman up. So long as that male stands, the household can never fall. Do you understand that? Jesus is the head of the church. The church, the people in the church can fall all day. Jesus will assist them back up. But if in the event, and it's impossible to do so, if the head falls, the whole thing crumbles. You are the head of the house, the head of this thing, gentlemen. You are. And if you fall, things connected to you fall. If you're beguiled, everybody's beguiled. If you're angry, anger enters into your home. If you seek revenge, revenge will be in the heart of your wife. We should know these things. Anger causes pain, and pain causes, you, causes men physical turmoil. When a woman has a pain of the heart, a man will always feel it physically. I'm telling you the truth. God cursed the woman with pain and birthing. God cursed the land for the sake of the male. Which means when a male does not uphold the standards of the Lord, struggle comes. A great struggle comes because the land, your yield is cursed. Your yield is cursed. See, a man also wants to be a provider for the home, and they feel like a failure when they can't provide. So then operate within the standards of Christ and become a provider. And you won't feel so low. When you don't operate by the standards of Christ, men, the curse that was given to Adam is now in your life. And for the sake of you not operating by the standards of Christ, the land around you is cursed. It won't yield right. Well, if the land doesn't yield, your paycheck is going to be slim. I'm telling you the truth. Your provisions for the household will begin to fail. When you uphold the standards of Christ, that curse is automatically removed. You see, in Christ, there is no curse. Outside of Christ, there is a curse. To be in Christ is to operate by his standards and do those things he said to do. To be outside of Christ is not to do those things he said to do. There's a curse outside of Christ. There is no curse inside of him. 
Hope you men understand that. Hope you can get this. Treat your spouse as the most precious thing you will ever have in this world. And then watch the Lord complete your life. Stop trying to be young again, gentlemen. Stop thinking those fleeting thoughts and operating by your lusts. Stop doing that. If you cannot appreciate your spouse, don't you dare look at other women nor give company to them. So you have sought the Lord to repair your heart concerning your spouse. It's an evil thing for a male to lose interest in his spouse. That means evil has crept in somehow and you didn't see it. And evil causes a male to drift. But if that male drifts, that'll be the end of his life. Don't ever drift. You'll kill yourself and God will free those of whom you have kept in bondage because when you drift you put people in bondage mm -mm. so men of standards let us all be of standards let all of us have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first in all things we will not in the men of standards groups operate by flesh and all things will be subject unto the words of Christ in truth. We will pray true prayers and not repetitious nonsense. You'll know my weaknesses and you never have to tell me yours. We will pray together and we'll also stand together. And should one of our brothers become weak, we will be his strength. We will. There will be a camaraderie in Christ Jesus. We will realize that we are true family and we're not strangers. Families can share anything. But we're not going to be a family like families of this realm who utilize what you tell them against you, but a family of truth. This family that starts here goes on for eternity. Remember that. Some of the people you know now in the body of Christ, you're going to know them in eternity. The relationships you begin now will carry on to eternity. Remember that. You really do have a beautiful future. So make the final decision here and now. You know you're not going to be here long in this state, in this form. You're not going to contend with these things in the world now, but now is a test, gentlemen. To truly see who you're serving. See, in order for you to say, I serve the Lord today, you have to serve him when conditions are unfavorable. You have to serve him in times of famine because you're choosing to. You're not obligated to serve anybody. That's why the word says, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. It's not an obligation, nor can we force one another to serve the Lord. That's evil. That's why you were offended when somebody tried to make you go to church. You get offended. You provoke when you do that. People are provoked when somebody tries to make them give. That's evil. You serve out of your heart, and that's out of truth. Your heart is the truth of you. What comes out of your mouth comes out of your heart, and that is the truth of you. And if the truth of you is distasteful, take it to the Lord. Don't deny it. Whatever you deny, you keep. And you're going to keep. And whatever you keep, you're not repenting of. Nor did you present it to the Lord, but you're protecting it. And that's why it stays with you for so long. If filth comes out of your mouth, no longer excuse it. But be a man of standards and say, oh, no, 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 this has to go. If you get angry with your spouse, then you say, nope, this has to go. Anger has no placement with me. If you get around other people, 
and you begin to spend, you know, treat your spouse differently, say, nope, I'm not going around those people until I get it right with my spouse. Doesn't matter what she said, it matters what you do. Understand this. Please understand. She can fuss at you and do everything she wants to do. But the Lord is looking at you. What are you going to do? You can't blame anything on her like Adam did. Adam said, well, the, the woman you gave me, she, she made me do it. No, she didn't, Adam. Men do the same thing. Well, she provoked me, and I got angry, and I had no choice. No, the Lord's not going to take that as an excuse. No, because he, he knows how he made you. But you need to understand how you're made. You're much more than what you thought. Don't settle in your minds to be anything less than what God called you for. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. Gentlemen, and everybody out there in COT, I'm going to say God bless you. Men of Standard, listen, there are two contacts for the Men of Standard. One is directly to myself at Mike at CouncilOfTime.com. One is with Pastor Scott so far. We will begin to organize meetings for the Men of Standards once a week. These meetings will go forward. Sometimes Pastor Scott may not be there. Sometimes I may not be there, but the meetings must go forward. These meetings are not going to be full of instruction from me to you or Pastor Scott to you. But a collective meeting place for those men who serve the Lord. Some of you have difficulties in certain things about being a male, and males must speak into the lives of males. We have a standard, and we're going to learn those standards that Christ Jesus gave unto us, that the Lord has designed us with. We can't keep standards we know nothing of. All standards will be defined, talked about, and achieved. Through the graces and mercy of our Lord and Savior, He will allot time that we may achieve this for the glory of Him, not for us. As men of standards, we seek liberty for others. But we ourselves will stay in bonds for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A man of standards is not afraid of bondage. We're bound to stand up for others. We are charged to suffer that one may not suffer. We have strength in giving up everything of ourselves for the sake of someone else. That's what a man of standards is. These things we will discuss. Father, thank you for the joining of the people and this talk. Lord, I ask that these words, if they be truthful, that they permeate the hearts and minds of those who are participating in this listening. Heavenly Father, we thank Thank you for the opportunity to join together and discuss such things. And we perpetually and continually ask you, Lord, to expose those things, the hearts that stand against you. Father, we humbly submit ourselves to you for giving all things that anybody has done to us, that we may also be forgiven. Through your son, Jesus of Nazareth, Father, this truly is a new day. We understand that yesterday we cannot touch, it does not exist. Tomorrow does not exist. So we thank you, Lord, for this day, another opportunity to serve you better than we did previously. Father, we ask for a touch on our homes that each and every individual understand how to be a watchman, how to keep those doors closed upon their homes. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we stand against anger. We stand against strife. We stand against envy. We stand against lust in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We stand against provocation. 
Father, give us strength in the areas that we will not be provoked by companions or our children. Help me stand in your wisdom and understanding that we may depart a spiritual truth to all those who are frustrated and carry the wrong spirit. Open our eyes, Heavenly Father, as we are able to walk in you. Father, grant us to truly become men of standard, standing always and never fainting. These things we ask in the precious name of Jesus of Nazareth, the only begotten Son of the living God. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, Dr. V may be up at uh, 5 p.m. Is it 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Gentlemen, we're going to schedule a meeting for the coming weekend for the Men of Standards. And if you desire to be a part of the Men of Standards, just let us know. And we're going to narrow down some ways we're going to host these uh, meetings with topics and things of that nature. Right. Uh, we will, um, half of our sessions will not be recorded unless we're doing it live like this, which will be far and few in between, okay? All right. That's for the men of standards. Mayor says, Mike, what about us? Angela is operating a study with the ladies. That's what she's doing, right? It is good for women to speak into the lives of women. That's very good, right? It's great that men speak into the lives of men. So many things have been absent for so long. And some of you out there have children. And it's time that truth be reinstalled where truth should be. Not by what I think, but by what the Lord has already established. Mayors, we're going to kick that up this week. Now, the science team out there, guys, since you guys, I, I kind of know your habits, so there are going to be occasions where we just kind of, if we're talking in there together, we'll just start talking about things. A scheduled meeting is something, we'll have meetings sporadically, and the reason why is this, um, there are going to be some classes I'm going to be teaching directly to some of you guys in the science team. Anybody who wants to take some of these classes, you can. I would just ask that you use, you know, these the skills and talents of things that have to do with technology, interpretation of mathematics, quantitative mathematics. And I'm going to give you some classes so you can understand some of these things and formulas you never saw before. For the sake of simulations, accuracy, and some other things I won't discuss. These will all be tools in the science team the science pages. All of the findings of the science teams will be made public to COT members. To members. So if you're a member, you'll see some of the findings that we have. And if you're not a member, you're still going to see some of the findings, just not all the tools and everything. Here's why. To be a member and to utilize some of the tools, we have to log you into the system so we can monitor the time and the bandwidth taken up by the tools. Right? If you're just an anonymous viewer of the site, we can't do that because we can't actually compensate for each one that utilizes these tools. There's compensation that has to take place if the information is still accurate. Right? Thus, you have to be a member so we can see you log in and compensate for any latency. Because timing is going to be everything. everything. There will be live data in the science pages, and that's why. So we need to tell you if it's 100 milliseconds off or 2 seconds off, right? You're going to have to know that. If there's a delay, we want everything accurate down to about 300 milliseconds so that you get proper information. That will actually be classified as real-time data. And so real-time data is also going to be snapshotted every second. So then every second there's going to be a snapshot of data that will be available for about 15 days. We'll store it, scrub it, and go to the new sets of data so that anything scrubbed from the Internet will automatically be saved on COT servers. And that will give you guys a chance to go back and query or look for certain things that happen during certain parameters. And even when we write software to bring up long-term changes, 
right? These changes are just simply going to open your eyes to quite a few things. Even with the earthquakes, there, there, there's a waveform with the earthquakes. That is another waveform discovered in quantitative mathematics, quantitative sciences, right? The same waveform that's in fluid dynamics, celestial mechanics, massive observations and many things, even in life forms. So that waveform of the Earth is increasing. But the other planets are beginning in that specific type of waveform too. It's, it looks more like a machine waveform than any natural or biological waveform. It is steady. The intervals are precise. And the waveform is highly unique. That will be revealed in some of the studies that we will reveal on COT. And the reason why we're doing that is to let you know that, yes, things are changing. But it will also let you know what's happening to your own body. If the changes in the earth would not affect the body, there'd be no need to track the changes in the earth. But the more you know how things affect your flesh, the better you can just boot things out of your mind and you won't be caught off guard, right? And you can still walk in servitude having understanding. And you won't have unnecessary fear. Fear is a result of darkness or being kept in the dark, not knowing where you're going. Being untrue about your next step, right? Men's hearts are going to fail them for fear because they're not going to understand what's happening. It will appear that physics is going to break down. Physics. That means all of what we trust in, things that keep airplanes in the air and things of that nature are going to suddenly change. Physics and constants will change. Things will become warped. If you can understand that as they begin to happen and see it as we present it, well, then you're going to be highly informed and you'll understand. Then you can help other people with truth. And you can truly tell them, hey, the Lord's not going to have you ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy, nor have you ignorant of those things he's doing in the world. The Lord is truly, truly, he is our Savior. Because they're going to be asking, well, how in the world do you, do, do you know this? You guys may get something I never saw before in my life. In either case, the Lord is not going to have us in the dark. Because we're children of the light. All things will be known of those through whom he reveals things to. Right? We're already a controversial site. No need to change now. So, Mayor, there you go. We're going to be working on those things. Working on quite a few things, really. And yesterday, oh, it's just a miracle because we just about lost everything yesterday yeah so we're doing uh, repairs and setups and everything else because uh, some of the overseas components uh, just a battle keeping those things going but we have a pretty large audience and we're, we, we have found a way I think we have found a way to consolidate all five sites that belong to COT into one and we're going to pray about that and I'll seek the Lord about that because I really need his guidance in that to see where that goes. The other sites, they're just output only, not so much input. But the demand on those sites is get, getting pretty high, pretty high, right, really high. That's why we want to consolidate everything. So, of course, you know, COT has some things we have to employ so that our... Uh, our automated systems can do a lot of the management of data for us. But we'll be working on that. I want to say God bless everybody. Doc V, are you beginning at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today? If you are, the system would be queued up for you on the regular time, whatever time you uh, naturally can. I see that, Mayor. But whatever time you decide to come on, we'll, we'll go for it. Okay? We'll go for it. And we'll, uh, okay, you can do so now. Oh, okay, well, guess what, guys? We're going to swap. We're going to go to Dr. V after Dr. V, Pastor Paul's coming on. 
And to my understanding on Passball, BB Earthwatch is going to be there. Um, Dr. Vernon Hale, that's what we call him, Dr. Vernon Hale. He plays the rooted gospel music. I like that, too. You know, it's amazing. The older the gospel music, all that wisdom is coming right back again. I, I just think that's amazing. I think it's amazing. All that wisdom back then is really beginning to make sense now. And certainly to some... Now, here's something. Because young people are fascinated with albums, LPs. Do you guys know that? They think the record player is the hottest piece of technology they ever saw in their lives. Did you guys know that? There's something in it. And that's something. That's, that's something else. No. But Dr. V is coming up, guys. We're going to swap over to him. And Dr. V, you can take it away. It gives about uh, two minutes and we'll be set on you, brother. And you can take that away. Okay? We're going to get on his mix now. Okay, guys, I love you. And we will see everybody later on here shortly. I'm going to be in and out while Dr. V is there. And then uh, I'll probably be in the chat room on and off. I have some paperwork to take care of for CRT folks. i got to answer some emails and things of that nature. So God bless everybody.